The Thompson River cuts through the rugged country of South Central British Columbia, Canada. Its wild and scenic course was an ideal route for building a transcontinental railway and today is used by both Canadian Pacific and Canadian National. Continuing the journey we began along Canada's Fraser Canyon, we follow the Thompson River for 95 miles between Lydon and Kamloops. Both railways operate jointly over much of the territory, with eastbounds using Canadian Pacific's Thompson Subdivision and westbounds using Canadian National's Ashcroft Sub. Shot in July, August and January, the stunning scenery and stark seasonal contrast is enhanced by the sight and sound of heavy mainline trains. This is Canada's Thompson Canyon. The Thompson River begins as a glacier on its north fork and a lake on its south. They combine at Kamloops and flow west through Kamloops Lake, then south through the Thompson Canyon meeting the Fraser River at Lydon. Canadian Pacific Railway was first to build through the canyon, pushing east from the Fraser to Savannah by 1884 and Kamloops the following year. Three decades later, the Canadian Northern Pacific completed their task of building on the more difficult side of the river, with the last spike being driven at Basque in 1915. Outside of a few realignments, these are the lines that are still in service today. Our journey through the Thompson Canyon will begin at Lydon, and as we head east, we will show you the scenic highlights of each railway. Canadian Pacific's route is known as the Thompson Subdivision and heads east through Thompson, Drynock, Spence's Bridge, Toketic, and Basque. NEPA, milepost 54.8, marks a connection with the Canadian National and the end of joint directional running. The line passes through Black Canyon and into Ashcroft before climbing through Semlin to the summit at Wallachine. Trains then drop down through Savannah and a four mile stretch of double track through Tunkwa and Dodge. The line continues along the south side of Kamloops Lake with double track beginning again at Tranquil and continuing to Kamloops. Canadian Nationals route is part of the Ashcroft subdivision and heads east through Lasha, Morris, Spence's Bridge, and Basque, where it connects to the Canadian Pacific on either side of Coho, milepost 57.2. It continues east through Black Canyon and Ashcroft, Maccabee, Wallachine, and along the north side of Kamloops Lake through Savannah, Gillespie, and Frederick before crossing the North Thompson River at Kamloops. The icy fingers of Old Man Winter maintain a firm grip on the Cascade Range of southern British Columbia, Canada. The cold blue waters of the Thompson and Fraser Rivers combine forces on their westward journeys to the Pacific at Lydon, starting point on our tour through the Thompson Canyon to Kamloops, a distance of roughly 95 miles depending on which rail line you follow. We will be following both. Looking to the east on Canadian National's Ashcroft Subdivision, a westbound CP coal train crawls out of the Thompson Canyon and over the west switch of Lasha.
It's a quarter to two in the afternoon, and the winter sun hangs low in the southern sky. It's cool light illuminating the scene. The train passes accompanied by a sharp breeze from deep within the canyon. The temperature today is around 19 degrees Fahrenheit, and as we head east, the mercury will continue due south. Departing Lydon, the Thompson Canyon cuts a deep swath through the mountains whose summits range between 4 and 8,000 feet. Their steep slopes bring the risk of rock slides and you will see how Canadian National dealt with one such problem area in a moment. Our next train is UP 5525 West. The stray C-45AC CTE leads a loaded Canadian Pacific grain train bound for Vancouver through Lasha. It is not uncommon to find Union Pacific pool power on CP trains, as many railroads trade horsepower hours with each other's locomotives. A Canadian Pacific GE applies power and dynamic braking to the rear of the loaded grain train. It is interesting to note that not only can Union Pacific 5500 series locomotives lead in Canada, they can also be linked to Canadian Pacific engines in a distributed power arrangement like we see here. During our summertime visit to the canyon, we find more interesting power as BC Rail number 4464 leads an eastbound CN stacker between Lydon and Gladwin on the CP. The BCOL 4644 is a GEC 44-9 WL, built in 1995 for BC Rail, which became part of Canadian National in 2004. Canadian Pacific's Thompson subdivision follows the south bank of the river while Canadian National's Ashcroft sub takes the north. Moments after the stack train passes from view, the westbound Rocky Mountaineer appears on the opposite side of the river as it approaches the Gladwin Tunnel 
at milepost 94.7 on the CN. The train continues west toward Lasha, and we head east on this hot July afternoon. One of the slide-prone areas of CN's Ashcroft Sub are protected by the Cape Horn Tunnel and rock sheds just east of the Gladwin Tunnel. A westbound Canadian Pacific coal train bound for Roberts Bank passes through the 276-foot bore of Wrexham Tunnel at milepost 93.1. The train is dwarfed by its surroundings as it approaches the Cape Horn rock sheds at milepost 93.7, 8, and 9, respectively. The train enters the 742-foot Cape Horn Tunnel as it wraps around the north bank of the Thompson River. The train disappears into Cape Horn Tunnel as seen from our perch above the river near Gladwin. As evening nears, the wind kicks up on this hot, dry July day. Turbulent gusts are funneled through the narrow gorge, picking up dust from the steep slopes on either side of the canyon. It's 5 p.m. on the 29th day of July, 2016. As we gaze at our surroundings, we hear a trio of big GE diesels. A westbound stack train snakes through the canyon in perfect evening light.
The stacks pass beneath two slide chutes prior to entering Wrexham Tunnel. Apparently, Canadian National has not found it necessary to install rock sheds here. As the train disappears into the shadows, we hear an eastbound on the CP. CP 8758 takes more coal empties to Crow's Nest Pass. Continuing railroad east, the canyon opens after passing through the Jaws of Death Gorge, a portion of the river popular with whitewater rafters. The Thompson Indians referred to this as Pitqua, meaning water boiling. Pitqua was the name of a 6,590-foot siding on CN's Ashcroft subdivision that is today known as Morris. Here we see another CP coal train slithering west.
returning to winter. The river makes a bend near Nickaman Creek as BCOL 4603 appears on the point of a westbound grain train. This same train was featured in our program on the Fraser Canyon. These cowl body GEs came equipped with two ditch lights and two corner lights. Notice how the right lights get brighter as a locomotive rounds the curve. BC Rail used this cross pattern to help see around curves when visibility was low. Returning to summer and Canadian Pacific's Thompson Sub, CN2535 East leads a stack train through Drynock at milepost 78 on a cloudy morning. The tracks duck under the Trans-Canada Highway at this location. Just east of the overpass, a clear signal shows for CP8708 East as it leads a 154-car manifest toward Spence's Bridge in the gathering darkness.
the mercury drops towards zero as the train's Fred bids us farewell on this winter's night. Moving the clock backwards six months and jumping to the other side of the river, Canadian National's Skunka Tunnels and Rock Sheds are viewed breaching the rocky cliffs. This scene is near milepost 80.5 on the Ashcroft sub. A westbound CN loaded grain train passes through the tunnels with the engines and dynamics on the slight descending grade. The engineer has come out of dynamics and into power, as evidenced by the radio-controlled SD70M-2. Its two-stroke prime mover adds 4,300 horsepower to the middle of the train. The SD70M-2 is the DC version of the popular SD70 ACE and is no longer in production. Canadian National ordered 190 of these units, the largest number of any railway. A rickety suspension footbridge gives railway maintenance personnel access to the Skuka tunnels. It is off limits to the public. From our higher perspective on the south bank of the Thompson, we catch CN 2443 West on the point of a 128 car mixed manifest. The 2443 is a cowl body GE C40 8M. Mechanically, it is identical to a Dash 8 40 CW and produces 4,000 horsepower. We shot this same train in our Fraser Canyon video, crossing the Arch Bridge at Cisco. The second unit is a former Illinois Central SD70, number 1029.
Donning our heavy coats and returning again to the season of winter, the temperature is around 6 degrees above zero as we set up above the CP mainline. Westbound CN train 417 heads toward the Skunka Tunnels. The second unit is another GE C40-8M, still wearing CN's classic stripes. CN 2185 East appears on the CP. On a visit in early August, the temperature is at least 80 degrees warmer and the westbound Rocky Mountain air is seen again between Spence's Bridge and Skunka Tunnels.
One of the attractions at Spence's Bridge are the Murray Creek Falls at the west end of town. With the temperature dipping below zero, they appear frozen, although water is still flowing beneath the ice if you look carefully. The sun has just reached the tracks at 12.23 p.m., near the apex of its journey across the winter sky. Westbound train 417 is seen again passing the falls, having just completed a crew change at Spence's Bridge. Moving trackside, it is nearly 3.30 p.m. as we catch CP8547 racing west with a stack train. Although we are closer to the falls, they are out of view at this location. The train rolls west and out of view in the fleeting afternoon sunlight. An old weathered church is one of the prominent features in the small community of Spence's Bridge, complete with a classic bell tower. Spence's Bridge got its name from a one-lane steel truss bridge, which once crossed the Thompson River. It was decommissioned in 2014, and only the pilings remain today. This twilight shot was taken near the CP tracks, and we can see a string of double stacks being stored on the CN on the far side of the river. Crossing over, 
We set up near milepost 74.8 on CN's Ashcroft subdivision. CEFX 1041 leads a CP grain train west. The 1041 is a leased GEAC 4400CW. These units are a common sight on Canadian Pacific trains. A mid-train remote, CP8579 adds its muscle, wearing the Beaver logo. Returning to the Canadian Pacific's Thompson subdivision, it is a warm summer's evening. CP8758 leads an eastbound empty coal train through Spence's Bridge. Looking to the east, the train crosses the Nicola River Bridge 9 at milepost 71.1. CP's Princeton subdivision once joined the main line near here. It ran 177.8 miles to Penticton over the former Kettle Valley Railway. The line was abandoned in 1989. The 5,486-foot peak of Arthur's Seat rises in the clear range above Spence's Bridge. The temperature this morning is 0 degrees Fahrenheit, and a stiff breeze blows from the south as CP8788 East takes a stack train toward Kamloops.
On the north bank of the icy Thompson River, a westbound CP manifest enters Spence's Bridge on Canadian Nationals Ashcroft Sub. As a train passes, a high rail truck heads east on the CP. On our January visit to the Thompson Canyon, the temperature dropped several degrees below zero and a stiff breeze added to the wind chill. We take a moment to thaw out from all of that and return to the canyon in August. The westbound Rocky Mountaineer heads through Moran on a warm summer morning. It operates between late April and mid-October with several routes through BC and western Alberta. Its southernmost point is Seattle, Washington. The luxury train provides daylight runs with first-class service on routes that offer fantastic views. While we focus on the Mountaineer, you will notice an eastbound CN stacker on the far bank of the river. The Rocky Mountaineer continues towards Spence's Bridge, while on the far bank, the eastbound stack train continues its march toward Kamloops. We are now standing at the same location in winter. The temperature is five degrees above zero and fog forms along the surface of the cold water. Retracing the path of the Rocky Mountaineer six months earlier, CN 8882 West passes the old spur track at Moran, just below the Trans-Canada Highway.
The train continues west through the cool winter sunlight and shadows of the canyon. In the black of night, at 6.30 p.m., rails gleam a bright red and green. A nearby signal is cropped by one of the Martell tunnels found at milepost 67.5 on the Ashcroft subdivision. A westbound is in the block and we let its headlights gradually show us the scene. It is now four minutes later, yet six months earlier. And thanks to the longer days of summer, we watch an eastbound CP manifest passing in the shadow of evening thunderclouds. The train continues to wind along the east bank of the river toward the former siding of Spatsum and will soon arrive at Basque, the end of joint running with the CN. A sign along the Trans-Canada Highway marks the approximate location of the last spike on Canadian Northern Pacific's transcontinental mainline through the Thompson and Fraser Canyons. Completed in 1915, it is today part of Canadian National's Ashcroft subdivision. A bald eagle is perched just above the main line and has a great view of both railways here. A westbound CP stack train has just entered the Canadian National's Ashcroft sub at Basque and now follows the west bank of the icy Thompson River.
Meanwhile, on the CP side, an eastbound Canadian National Manifest is just a few miles from entering its home rails again. The westbound CP continues towards Spence's Bridge on this cool winter's morning. In a similar fashion, the eastbound CN disappears from sight as it nears Basque. Located in the southern interior of British Columbia, the historic Basque Ranch was one of the earliest ranches in the country. Here, steep canyon walls break abruptly above the Thompson. Both railways are now on the east-south bank of the river. A grain hopper is spotted in a spur just off the CP mainline, which at this point parallels the CN into Black Canyon, west of Ashcroft. This morning, the area has been covered in a freezing fog, which is slowly burning off, falling to the ground as ice. A westbound CN 170-car potash train rolls through Basque.
After rounding the distant bend, the CN Main Line crosses the Thompson River as it heads west. The two railways connect just east of our location at Basque Junction. And from a ridge, we can see the Black Canyon Tunnels. The CN bore is on the left, with the CP on the right. The Ashcroft subdivision crosses the river again at the west portal of the tunnel. After waiting a few minutes, a westbound CN grain train exits the tunnel at milepost 55. A few minutes after the train, a high rail truck also heads west. Just east of Black Canyon is the community of Ashcroft, Founded in the 1860s during the Caribou Gold Rush, it has a long history with both railways. A CP local waits in the 8,645-foot siding near milepost 47.3, while a westbound Rocky Mountaineer heads through town on the opposite side of the river. Situated in the rugged, desert-like interior of southern BC, this area has been used numerous times for television and movie sets. And we also find this an excellent location for filming. The train disappears into the 934-foot bore of the Cornwall Creek Tunnel at milepost 51.5. The Mountaineer appears again briefly as it enters Black Canyon. An eastbound CP empty potash train rounds a curve on the approach to Ashcroft. The train meets the local which is still in the siding. Based in Kamloops, the local serves a tie plant just east of Ashcroft and switches covered hoppers in the lime spur here at milepost 47.6.
Within a few minutes, CN3074, a brand new GE ET44AC, leads an eastbound stack train out of the Cornwall Creek Tunnel and into town. Transitioning back to winter, CN 2645 East leads a manifest through town on a cold yet bright January morning.
Frost clings to the trees in a park on the far side of the river. Crossing over, CP 8918 East leads a stack train toward Kamloops with help from the UP 5542. CP-9357 lends a hand mid-train. Ashcroft is nestled in the southern part of British Columbia's interior plateau. Its semi-arid sagebrush grasslands are in stark contrast to the lush valleys and forested hillsides found in the Fraser Valley and Cascade Range. The Thompson Canyon cuts a deep course through the rugged country, allowing the passage of the river and the railway. Dropping down to the Thompson South Bank, just east of town, thunderclouds build overhead as the evening sun slowly slips behind the canyon's north rim. While the lowlands fill with evening shadows, CP-9363 takes an empty coal train past the east switch of Ashcroft on its return trip to Crow's Nest Pass.
Evening shadows continue to fill the canyon as the train heads east on its 1.2% climb to Wallachine. The next morning, an eastbound CN stack train appears out of the shadows at Maccabee, a 12,476-foot siding on the Ashcroft sub. The train winds along the north bank of the Thompson on a grade of no more than 0.3% between Ashcroft and Wallachine. The stack train continues east, and we can make out a westbound grain train departing Maccabee in the distance. Across the river, a westbound CP coal train heads through Semlin on the Thompson sub. The westbound CP coal train continues toward Ashcroft, and we dissolve to another winter scene at Wallachine, where a single-lane auto bridge crosses the Thompson. Just to our right, the CN Ashcroft subdivision heads toward one of many crossings of the river. The train crosses the Thompson River Bridge 2 at milepost 34. The bridge is 1109 feet long and 43 feet high. It is located just west of the siding and Wallachine.
Continuing east, track work is going on near the community of Savana at CP Station Tonkwa, milepost 24.1. This is a crossover on a four-mile section of double track. Meanwhile, an eastbound CN stack train slowly passes the siding of Savana on the other side of the river. Here, the Thompson River widens into Kamloops Lake. Looking ahead, we see why the train is traveling so slowly. The westbound Rocky Mountaineer has just departed Kamloops for a daylight run to Vancouver. It will meet the stack train in the 13,350-foot siding. The RTC has lined up a perfectly timed meet between the two trains, and they continue past each other at a slow roll. RTC refers to Rail Traffic Controller and is the same as a train dispatcher in the U.S. The town of Savana was originally built on the North Bank, but was relocated here when the CPR arrived in 1884. It marked the end of a stage line from Cache Creek. Travelers over the Caribou Wagon Road could board a ferry to cross the Thompson River. It was named Savannah's Ferry. Ice and snow cover the west end of Kamloops Lake as a westbound CN stack train heads through Savannah. The CP Thompson subdivision is seen in the foreground. A sawmill operates at the east end of Savannah and is served by the Canadian Pacific. CP 9369 East takes a manifest through town on the north track. We get a great view of Kamloops Lake from Six Mile Hill, just east of Savannah. The lake is 18 miles long, nearly one mile wide, and reaches a maximum depth of nearly 500 feet. From our lofty vantage point, an eastbound CN stack train hugs the north shore near Gillespie. The 7,500-foot siding is named after J.A. Jack Leslie who hired on with the Canadian Northern Pacific Railway during its construction in 1916. An old corral sits in the tall grass overlooking the lake from Six Mile Hill underscoring the importance ranching has had in the area for generations. Prior to the building of the railway, 
Rivers and lakes were a choice mode of transportation for those exploring and settling in the province. Paddle wheel steamships once were a common sight here. Loaded with gold seekers for the Big Bend Rush of 1864-65, grain from the Okanagan, and much needed supplies for the building of the CPR, which in turn spelled the end of the steamboat era. Looking east in the morning hours, the only visible evidence of the city of Kamloops are a few smokestacks from mills at the southwest end of town. Founded in 1811 as a fur trading post, Kamloops is situated at the confluence of the north and south branches of the Thompson River. With a population of over 90,000, it ranks as a 63rd largest city in Canada. Both Canadian Pacific and Canadian National have yards here, and it serves as a division and crew change point for both railways. Canadian Pacific's yard is located on the south side of the river near downtown Kamloops. It is laid out east to west, with the Shushwap subdivision continuing east toward Revelstoke over Eagle Pass. Canadian National's yard is located on the north side of the river and is set up in a north-south direction, with the Clearwater subdivision continuing north and east toward Yellowhead Pass. A connector track crosses the South Thompson as part of CN's Okanagan subdivision and joins the CP just east of their yard. East of this crossing, vintage equipment can be found belonging to the Kamloops Heritage Railway, which offers steam excursions to the public. A vintage Canadian Northern caboose sits near Pioneer Park with a fresh coat of red paint. The park is located along the river's edge and offers a great view of the historic Red Bridge. This 80-year-old wooden truss bridge was opened in 1936, the third of its kind to cross the river as part of the old Yellowhead Highway. The first was built in 1887. It was replaced by a second in 1912, which was partially destroyed by fire in 1931. The Red Bridge gets its name from the color of the wood used in construction, Douglas fir. Closer to downtown, the Kamloops Sandman Center is a central point of sporting events and entertainment. It is adjacent to the Canadian Pacific's busy rail yard near milepost 0.0, .0 on the Thompson Sub. West of town is the busy Domtar Pult Mill. It was originally built by Weyerhaeuser in 1972 and provides over 300 local jobs. Set up between Mission Flats Road and 2nd Avenue, CP 8867 West proceeds slowly out of the yard towards signals 15 and 16 N, N meaning North Track. The train comes to a stop at the signal, and soon a second westbound CP8891 passes our location on the south track.
Through the passing cars, we can see that the CP-8867 is again on the move. Both trains come to a stop on this cold winter's evening. The 8867 is still finishing up some switching duties in the yard and waits to collect the conductor, while the 8891 soon receives permission to continue west for a nighttime run through the Thompson and Fraser Canyons. Sometime tonight, the crew will tie up at North Bend after handing the train off to a Vancouver crew at Boston Bar. But that's a story for another time. The train continues west, and we switch our attention one more time to North Kamloops and the Canadian Nationals Line. In 1914, the Canadian Northern Pacific Railway arrived in Kamloops building south and west of Jasper along the North Thompson River. The Ashcroft subdivision departs west over the river via the North Thompson River Bridge 4. Our final train of the day, CN 2156 East, crosses the bridge on a cold January morning. This bridge is 1,338 feet in length and contains a non-operating vertical lift. As the train slowly lumbers into the yard, Canada geese rest on the snow that has accumulated on the frozen river.
The train heads through Kamloops Junction and arrives at milepost 0.0, .0 on the Ashcroft Sub after completing its journey through the Fraser and Thompson Canyons. We hope you've enjoyed your tour of this fantastic portion of Canadian National and Canadian Pacific's transcontinental mainlines. The Thompson Canyon offers unlimited photographic opportunities, and we have only touched on what you will find if you ever decide to visit. As always, until next time, thanks for watching.